back to my kitchen. I'm S.A. Trotter, your host. Today we're going to be preparing a roasted pork with potatoes, carrots, and onions. Uh, to flavor this we'll be adding a little bit of wine and some Worcestershire sauce, black pepper, and salt. I will be using some olive oil to coat the pan. That'll help keep things from sticking. Uh, it does add a little flavor, not so much that I think is really noticeable. Now when you're roasting, this time we're using a pork. Uh, you can roast pork this way, you can do chicken this way, you can do beef this way. It all works out fine. This makes a really good meal if you don't have a lot of time to attend your cooking. Uh, my mother used to do this a lot on Sundays because she could prepare it, put it in the oven, and when we came back after church, dinner was ready. All she had to do was make the gravy, put it on the table, and we were sitting down to eat. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. Now I've taken a nice piece of pork here. This is some uh, pork loin. Uh, it's just kind of an end cut, a random cut. It's very uneven, so it doesn't have much of the uh, appearance of a pork loin. However, that's exactly what we have here. The potatoes, doesn't matter what type you use. This time I'm using a russet. You can also use a red potato, gold potatoes, whatever you seem to like. They all roast really nice. So, let's start with getting our pan ready. Let's put in a little of our olive oil, coat the bottom of the pan. And if you'll notice, I don't use just a whole lot. You don't need to drown it with this, just enough to coat. Now, our meat down in there. And then, our vegetables, potatoes. Now that was for, uh, this is for about two people, maybe three. That was uh, three potatoes, three carrots, and one medium onion. Now the onion, I do want to break the segments up a little bit. So, there we are. It does not have to be perfect. There we go. just wonderful. You don't have to be pretty about this, just toss it all in the pot. Let's add a little bit of pepper. Some salt. Worcestershire sauce. Make sure you shake the bottle first. This stuff does separate. Now, I like to use this because once it's cooked in, you don't really taste the Worcestershire so much because it becomes very mellow after it's been roasted. But it makes the gravy taste absolutely divine. Now this time, because I'm using pork, I'm using a white wine. I find red wine has a tendency to overwhelm it. I put in about, oh, three quarters of a cup there, maybe a cup. That's really all I need to do, except for adding a little bit of extra liquid. I want to put some water down in there. There we go. That was about a half a cup of water. All I need to do now is cover this and throw it in an oven. 350 degrees. There. My work for lunch is finished, with the exception of making gravy, and that's the real trick. We'll be back with how to make gravy as soon as this is roasted. All right, I have just now finished uh, with the roast potatoes and carrots. I pulled that out of the oven. It has been about two and a half hours now. So what I'm going to do now that I'm taking these out of the pot, I'm going to put this right back into the oven to keep it warm as I prepare my gravy. Mm. Now, the gravy, very simple dish. I'm going to take the stock that is left in this pot, which is a nice brown liquid. Got pull some of this out here. It's got a lovely color to it. See that? Now, I want to take that and make it good and thick. So what I need to do is to heat it up. 
get some flame under it here. And I'm going to take a shaker. This is a standard shaker that's used for making uh, beverages. We're going to put some flour down in there. And this is about a third of a cup of flour. Now, to that, I want to add cold water. Now make sure this is cold, not hot. If you mix in hot water into this and try to shake it, guaranteed it will explode on you. Do not do not use hot water for this, only cold. Give it a good shake. Now what this will do is combine that flour and water and it'll keep your gravy from being lumpy. Okay? Now, there we go. Let that all combined. I'm just going to pour this directly down into the meat drippings. all at once. I'll use about half of it to begin with. Now if you'll notice I'm using the same pot that I cooked this in. Why not? Why do I need to transfer this? This pot has some residual uh, matter that has built up on the inside from the baking and uh, we call that a farm. That is nothing but pure flavor. Now, I want to get that mixed into the gravy. So, while that comes to a boil, I will also want to taste this. Make sure it's going to be exactly what I want it to be. Okay, that does taste a little bit weak. So what I want to do, add a little salt to this. So, and earlier we had put in some Worcestershire sauce. I want to add just a little bit more, maybe a tablespoon to two. Now, if this was a beef gravy, I would add more, but I do not want it to overwhelm the pork. And this has all of those flavors, carrot, potato, onion, the pork, all together. This only takes just a few moments. It's already starting to thicken on me. Added just a little bit more of that mixture. Now, for that, I used about a third of a cup of flour and about one and a half to one and three quarter cups of water. This is already starting to thicken. The color is dramatically different now. Look at this. See, that's nice and pretty. Exactly what we're looking for. And as this comes up to a boil, it will thicken even more. It's good to go ahead and cook this for just a little bit. And that way, it's going to cook that flour, and you will not have a raw flour taste in your gravy. So there you have it. It's really simple. This is a good Sunday meal or any time that you don't want to do much in the kitchen but you have plenty of time for it to cook. This is a wonderful meal for that. I'm going to bring this up to a boil. After I do that, once it's thickened all of the way, I'm going to show you how thick it got. And then I'm going to go sit down and have myself a nice meal. Now bubbling pretty. Now keep stirring this. You don't want it to uh, burn on you. You also don't want it to skin over on top. This way your gravy is going to taste wonderful. It will have no lumps in it. If you try putting that flour directly in there and stirring it in, the likelihood of you having lumps is going to be very high. There's our gravy. Nice, thick gravy. See how it coats the spoon? It's exactly what you want. That way you know it's going to hang on to your food real well. Okay. Thank you for watching. Good eating.